We've all sort of evolved now as consumers to have a healthy skepticism towards companies and sales messages. So what do you do to overcome this skepticism? Well, today I'll show you six different ways you can address the fears and doubts that might be keeping your reader from buying your amazing product. Hi, and welcome to the channel. This is Copywriting with Caroline, the place for tips on how to attract your target audience and convert them into loyal paying customers. I'm Caroline and I've been a copywriter and marketing consultant for over a decade now. And today you'll get six specific methods to lower skepticism from your potential customers so they'll become open and ready to buy your product or service. Okay, so the first thing you can do to sort of convince your skeptic reader that it's safe to buy from you is through something you already know, and that is testimonials. Now, when you have testimonials, it's a good idea to have the name and the picture of whoever's giving the testimonial. It just creates more credibility. And also, when you pick your person or people for this testimonial, it's a really good idea to have someone who is representative of the person who you want to buy. So someone they can relate to who have sort of the same goals and problems as themselves, and it'll be a lot more effective. The second thing you can use is sort of the same as a testimonial and then not. And that is a case story. A case story is like a testimonial, only it's a little bit more in depth. So if you sell products like um, coaching services or something a little more high end, a case story can be super good to have because it will um, give a little bit more of an in-depth view of the experience and how they overcome their challenges and stuff like that. The third thing you can do is to give a money back guarantee. A money back guarantee you can give in many forms. There are two main ones I'll go over here. The first one is the unconditional guarantee, which just means that for whatever reason you don't like my product, you get all your money back. Um, and then it's a good idea to have sort of a time frame so they don't come 20 years after, like maybe within 30 days or something. And the second one is the conditional guarantee, which is if for some reason that you give, um, then they can get their money back. Like um, I often see with coaching programs, a conditional guarantee is you get your money back if you don't get results with the condition that you did all the work that was required. Like if you did everything or it can be like exam prep, I guarantee you get an A if you follow my method, you know, something like that. Whether you decide to give a conditional or unconditional guarantee, I just wanted to inform you that um, about 2% on average actually uh, claim the guarantee because most humans are just like decent human beings and if we actually got value and like the product or service, we're not gonna ask for the money back. There are cheaters out there, but they are few and far in between. So a money back guarantee is actually a, a pretty decent strategy to win over new customers. Fourth strategy you can use is the free trial. A free trial that's often used by software programs. You've probably um, tried an app where you had like a 14 day free trial. It's a really great way if you know you have a great product, it's a great way to get your customers hooked. It's also like I think um, streaming services use this a lot because then people get hooked on a show, right? And they uh, don't want to quit. So they decide to continue on with the paid plan. When you give a free trial, you can have them, um, you can ask for their credit card info. So if they don't uh, opt out, meaning they actively say, I don't want this, then they'll be automatically charged. Or you can have an opt in. That just means that you don't ask for their credit card information upfront and they have to actually uh, actively sign up if they want to continue on. So pros and cons with an opt in, uh, you will get more signups because a lot of people, they don't want to sign up, even though it's a free trial, they don't want to give out their credit card information uh, because they know that they may forget to unsubscribe if they don't want it. And so they risk being charged something. On the other hand, when you give uh, opt out where they have to give their credit card information, you get more subscribers, but then those subscribers are the ones who actually don't want to be subscribers. So 
Personally, I prefer the opt-in, but it's a judgment call and you can even like test both methods. Methods. <laughs> the fifth one is to use social proof in numbers, meaning you write on your website how many happy customers you already have or how many social media followers you already have. It's a really simple method, but of course it only works if you are an established business and you have a fair amount. So if you only have one client, then that's maybe not the method for you. The sixth and final method is if you have a Trustpilot account, then go ahead and link to that because everyone trusts Trustpilot. And so that's a really good idea as well. You can pick one of these strategies or you can use several of them in combination if you want to create an extra strong message. Okay, so to sum up these six different ways of addressing your reader's skepticism so they'll be open to buy from you are testimonials, case stories, money back guarantee, and this can be conditional and unconditional, a free trial, social proof in numbers such as products sold so far or social media follows, and finally link to Trustpilot if you have a Trustpilot account. So. Now you're all set to write copy that will help overcome objections and skepticism from potential customers, but you really need to attract readers towards your sales page and get them to read it first. And how do you do this? With an eye-catching headline that will pull in your reader and get them interested enough to want to read your entire sales copy. So if you want to know exactly how to do that, write catching headlines to your sales page, then go ahead and click on this video, but I'll also give you some before and after examples of what makes a good sales page headline. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful day. See you in the next video.